All right, this is a quick video of the marginal analysis you can do on a labor market. And so um, I've got a situation here where workers are hired in a competitive environment. We're gonna pay them all $150 each, okay, which is up here, that's the wage. I'm gonna sell the widgets, whatever they're producing, for $4 each. Uh, I can hire up to six workers. Uh, this is how much total output I'm getting from each worker. And I want to figure out how many workers to hire, right? This is a fundamental question that, that faces firms. Pretty good question for all businesses, whether you're Walmart or just a, you know, a, a, a landscaping firm looking to hire an additional worker. So remember, profit maximization in, in microeconomics is always I'm going to hire up until or I'm going to do something up until the marginal cost equals the marginal benefit. So in this case, it's workers. The marginal cost is going to be the wage, and it's not going to change. In, in this example, it's 150. It could be something else and something else. And then uh, the marginal benefit is the additional benefit I get from hiring each worker. And so what that actually is is the marginal revenue product of labor. Okay, In other words, the additional revenue that I get from each worker. Okay, that each worker produces. So to figure that out, first I need the marginal product of labor. And then to get this, this is just marginal product of labor. Let me fix that real quick. Marginal product of labor times the price. Okay, so I'm going to assume you already know how to do marginal product of labor. There's no such thing as the first one. So second one is 55, or rather the first worker is 55. Um, second one in the sequence there. Uh, the next is 60, the next is 70, the next is 50 the next is 40 and the next is 20 so now the marginal revenue product is how much is all of this additional output worth okay so I'm gonna multiply it by 4 um, okay 55 times 4 I'm tired is 220 220 and the next one is 240 and the next one is 280 200, 160, and finally 80. Okay, so now I've got uh, now I've got everything to to figure this out. So we can just kind of go through it. Um, one thing you can do is just look where the wage is, um, and that's gonna be right here. So I'm gonna hire workers right up until there. But you can also just go one by one. So the first worker, uh, I ha it brings me to or the firm 220 dollars and I pay them 150 so I'm gonna hire them the next worker I'm gonna brings in $240 I'm gonna pay them 150 I'm gonna hire that worker the next worker uh, brings me 280 I really like that worker I'm gonna hire that worker I'm gonna pay them 150 this one I make a $50 profit on and this one I only make a $10 profit but that's better 10 is better than zero so I'm gonna hire up to that I'm not gonna hire this worker because this worker only brings me $80 in revenue uh, and I'm gonna have to pay them $150 for a loss of $70, and I, I don't, I don't want to do that. So I'm not gonna hire all the workers. Okay. Now let's just say, for example, sake, that the government decides that that wage is too low, and the government decides, you know, we're gonna uh, say you now have to pay $200 per week if you're gonna employ, employ labor. Okay. So I'm still gonna hire this worker. 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 But now I'm not going to hire this worker because I would I would have to pay them $200, and they would only bring in $160 for me. Okay. Similarly, you can think about if this price changes, you know, if this price goes up, uh, this is going to cause this to go up, and may hire additional workers. So, this is a non-graphical example of how you do this on a table: how many workers to hire.